already going. Okay. <clears throat> well, good morning, everybody. This is Minister Gloria Harlow Drummond. I want to share a video, and I can't do it justice, but anyway, um, it's concerning prophets, the role of a prophet, and uh, so, to my son-in-law, Michael, I want to thank you very much for uh, sharing Sister Betty, that video, that video. So, anyway, uh, this is Valentine's Day. This is the 14th of February of 2022. And... The title of it is uh, Prophets and Their Roles, basically. So I'm going to get started on this. <clears throat> I forgot whenever I push the thing, it automatically starts, starts rolling. So I'm not talking very loud because everybody's asleep. The time is uh, about 10 till 6 a.m. So I'm going to try to do this right, hopefully. Turn this around. Get it centered just about right. All right, here we go. This is my son in law and my uh, Michael. Rager and my daughter Joycey. Okay, here we go. I hope this is close enough. I think it will be. Hopefully. Here we go. It's going to be okay. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh boy. <laughs> We're live, dear. Oh. Hi. <laughs> anyway, we wanted to be on at nine, but sometimes it takes a little bit of persuasion with the software we use, um, trying to get everything set up like stuff over here on the left uh, all our images and our stuff right up here above us our ticker with the description so it's not no hurry up and get it done it just takes time yep so anyway um i got a 14 minute 28 second video i'm gonna share um with you guys um and then we'll be talking uh, a little bit about it I don't know if we're gonna if we're gonna stop the video, but this is gonna be a short broadcast. Um, but it'll put a lot of things in perspective about this particular topic. Um, you got anything to add? No. Oh. <laughs> so I do wanna I, I do want to uh, put this disclaimer out. Um, it's this video is not gonna be for everybody. It's gonna be hard to swallow for a, a lot of people. Yep. And I, I can't worry about that uh, because a lot of people that, that know me know that I don't really live by man's code. I don't care what man thinks. I don't, I don't care about man's opinion of, of certain things. Not all things, but, but certain things. So, um, again, I don't normally show or share these types of videos because they are Protestant um, and it's very very rare uh, that I'm showing something like this um, 
but it touched my heart and it uh it spoke a lot of volumes to to both of us mm -hmm. uh and it means something so um so yeah let's just get after it folks hello greetings today i'm coming here once more um, I'm coming away from what I was doing. This one, this particular um, video that I'm making may not be for everyone, but it will be for some. And um, the Lord has been speaking with me today, February 12, 2022, and on before that to get this out. And so uh, that's what I'm going to do. So here we go. This is a warning. And I'm going to go ahead and put the, put the, just a few scriptures I have to go with this. I'm just going to put them in the description box with everything else I put in here. Warning. Here we go. And a prophet is not welcome in his own country. Some say in, their, in his own hometown. This is what the Lord spoke to me. What is a prophet or a prophetess? Speak, they speak divine revelations from God. And I just wanted to give you that. I'm gonna read the warning. Here we go. The Lord says, I am calling my prophets and prophetesses to come in as I have much to say to get close to me. I have much to say. This is the day of the Lord, which is at hand. Things have been taken, and they have taken a very serious turn. Not yet seen, but I have seen. Prophets, prophetesses, rise up. Call assemblies. Call the people back to their first love. Souls are at very high risk, even my elect. Warn while there is still time. Warn. Open your mouth, prophets and prophetesses. Do not hold back. Do not hold back. Do not falter. Some will listen, meaning prophets, to their flesh. Come out then, as I say, this day is a call to all true offices of the prophet and the prophetess. And then I was given all this, and I'm going to give it. You can take notes, or you can just read and go back to the, um, um, if you didn't get it all and understand it, go back and listen to the video. What, I just spoke out. What does a prophet or a prophetess do? What are their, what are their, um, what is their authority? What is, what is a true man or woman of God that is called into this office? As I said earlier, they speak divine revelations from God. They spend time in the wilderness, many times in the wilderness with the Lord, to always hear directly from God. So they spend much time with the Lord. Prophets or the role of prophet and prophetess do not put themselves above anyone. They think about others. The role of a prophet are all about souls, repentance, and the true gospel of Christ. The role of a prophet and prophetesses is warn, warn, warn. Many are not well received because they are always so serious. Because they do, they scold. Their passion or their zeal for serving God is mistaken or misunderstood as falsehoods 
or being judgmental. The role of a prophet or a prophetess looks neither to the right or left because they are in tune with God. They are not out there looking to be approved by man, looking to get their praise or the opinions of man. Many times God speaks to us through prophets and prophecies. The role of a prophet, they many times do not get along with the pastors or leaders of church organizations or organized religion. Prophets and prophetesses are isolated much. For the most part, they do not need a lot of people surrounding them and they spend a lot of their time with the Lord. So some people might consider the prophet's life as lonely. And I'm sure it is to some extent, but what God is telling me here is what I have written and I'm giving to you so that you can have a little better understanding. They do not need to engage in a lot of idle talk or socializing, and they do not engage in debates or a lot of beliefs or chatter. We'll go through these as soon as I'm done here a little bit. They do not need, prophets and prophetesses do not need the approval of men or their credentials. They do not need to be approved by men. They do not have to wait and see what man will say. Will they confirm it? Will it fit in? Will it make them feel good? If they, will it make them feel really bad if they don't? And they know without a shadow of a doubt. Their call and they stand. That's the bottom line. They not only warn, but they will also bring many, many reminders. It's like a hammer that sometimes... More often than not, God will speak more than once. Prophets, prophetesses will speak more than once. Sometimes they will say the same thing. It's a reminder. It's hammering it over and over so that the body of Christ, the church, gets it. And finally, they are not fortune tellers of any kind in any way. The major role of a prophet and prophetess is to pull down, that means pulling down what is not godly, which is sin, to de destroy, which means, and also to depress spirits, taking authority over the spirits to destroy them, to, tear, to throw down, to, to cast the spirits where they need to be. It's the same thing when you're doing spiritual warfare. They do not go on opinions and beliefs. And finally, they also come to bless, build up the body of Christ and plant. They do that. Planting the word of God in people so that they have a word. So the role of the prophet is they menace, they admonish, they warn, they direct, they intercede, they teach, and they counsel. And under all of these, the bottom line is souls. They are calling the people back to God. That is their prime rule. And to go back to some of these rules, it is very true. Prophets are very private to a certain degree. Prophets do not need to announce themselves as a prophet or prophetess so-and-so or whatever it may be because true believers or, or even some know. So they do not have to title themselves every time they're in public. They know by the Spirit of God, their call, and they will stand on it, and they will not argue or allow anyone to diminish 
but they have been, but their calling is in the office of a prophet and a prophetess. They just won't. They will stand and that's it. They will not be persuaded by words of man. And again, prophets do not think themselves or should not think themselves highly or more than anyone else. What prophets as the rule is, they consider what is going on, what the words of God that have been given to them, and when to release them and when not to release them. And they consider everything that God gives them. They don't just go out and spew out things. God also is saying that he recognizes that, of course, as the word of God says, there are a lot of false prophets. There's a lot of false agendas. But God is trying to get us to see here today that it's very important now. There is a time now. These prophets and prophetesses that are truly called of God are being called by God right now to come out. There is something that God wants to do or prepare you for now. It is very important prior to something that we have not been told about yet or we have not seen, but God has. In other words, he knows and he has seen it. And so my understanding is when that is said, we need to pay attention, prophets. We, we need to pay attention and we need to go out there wherever he calls you in the wilderness. Wherever that is, we need to be hearing now. Not the chatter going on around in the world, all the, not that, all that, not all the chatter on emails, chat rooms. So no, this is different. You do have, let me tell you, the difference in, in watchmen and watch women and this one and that is completely different. In the office of a prophet or prophetess, there are some that call themselves handmaidens of God. That's a completely different thing. There's people out there that have words of prophecy, the gift of prophecy, completely different. We are talking here right now about the office of a prophet and the office of a prophetess, completely different. Now, yes, they also can give words of knowledge. They also can interpret. They can, um, they have the gift to see what well, God, there's a lot of things they do. But the primary call of a prophet and prophetess is the ones that I read. They warn, they admonish, they correct. They do not stand for foolishness. Yes, they are very serious because the call and the responsibility that they have calls for seriousness. That does not mean that they do not love the people that they are called to. They have to love all fools or they could not do the office that they've been called. They could not do the calling. The callings are very serious. So right now, God is calling. This is not for everybody, as I said earlier, but I was told to me to put it out immediately. So this is what I'm doing. It's an urgent call from the Lord himself, calling once more, prophets, office of prophets, office of prophetesses. And please pray and ask God, there are things that you are being going to be told that is not for those that are not in this call and therefore they will not understand many people do not understand the office of a prophet and a prophetess so I'm leaving it there thank you for watching God bless you I'm going back into prayer we will continue to pray we will continue to uh, see what God is doing we're going to continue um, Coming back on as the Lord leads, it's time to warn the people. Warn is very heavy was this message about warning and admonishing, no matter what. And I'm going to be bringing some things as the Lord allows. So God bless. Shalom. right
need to be, uh oh, that started and I didn't mean for it to, so let me uh -oh. turn that off. <laughs> so I got like 50 windows open, so just bear with me, folks. And before uh, I go any further about this, I've got to tell my brother, shut up, stupid. Um, it's just an inside joke. Cue the laughter anytime. Yeah, you can cue the laughter. <laughs> so, it's just something me and, me and him do. Uh, we just poke fun of each other. He's a dumb truck driver, professional steering wheel holder, and I'm a dumb diesel mechanic parts changer. Parts so. changer, yeah. Parts changer. <laughs> so I'll go downstairs and say, shut up, stupid, and he'll say, don't call me stupid, stupid. So it's kind of a, it's just fooling around. So, and he's, I think he's watching this. I don't know if he's not, he's probably passed out because he's a deadbeat. <laughs> so anyway, um, I got a message earlier about this particular video and, and uh, the person that I was talking to, which is my mother-in-law, knows how I feel about certain videos from Protestants. Um, it's not that I don't like them, I just... Cautious. I, I'm very cautious. Let me, let's just say that. I, I kind of, I'm very, very cautious. Because there's so much BS. There is, there is, there's so there. much BS. And I can, I have enough discernment and wisdom to... <laughs> there it is. There it is. Shut up, stupid. <laughs> I have, I have enough wisdom and discernment um, to know that who's full of it and who's not. And I'm, I, I'm very serious about stuff like that. If I, and, and my mother-in-law and I, well, I have it, but she's really, really had a hard time with my position on a lot of things because um, I'm very outspoken when it comes to truth. And she butt heads with me and tell me, you know, this or that and you know it just pretty well went one ear out the other because she didn't understand who I was and she will also tell you one of these days we'll have her on as a guest <laughs> but you know how old people are in technology um, it don't work well for some people mm -hmm. but she'll tell you that the things that I've told her have come to pass and things about certain religions if you will um, has turned out to, to be true, uh, not because I'm tooting my own horn or patting myself on the back because I'm nobody. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, that's just how, that's my whole demeanor. I, when, when God gives me something or shows me something and he tells me the right time to release it, I do it. I'm not going to get on social media and start prophesying like these these jokes on uh, Facebook and YouTube about prophesying in a person's life and ha having a prophetic word. That's not that's not just like this lady was was saying. Her name's Betty. Um, there's there's no there's no boundaries, if you will. Like I could give a prophetic word right now if I was a Protestant calling myself a prophet um and if you watch these so-called prophets who have the title they'll start giving a prophetic word to somebody and it's normally when i get a prophetic word or um a vision it is like this big it's it's not very informative if you will most time it leaves you with more questions yes than answers yes um <laughs> But these, these prophets that are all over the internet will say, okay, um, Ed, um, I see blah, 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 and then they'll pause, they'll have a brief pause, and then they'll go off on a tangent feeding someone's flesh uh, about something that should have been this much information. Adding more to what? Adding more, adding more to God's word if you will if he's even getting a word from from god um and yes there is a point to this so just bear with me um so that's not how a true prophet conducts himself he's very cautious he only says what needs to be said and if it leaves people hanging then it's up to that individual to go before god and, and pray about it 
It's not up to me to pray pray for the situation. I just have to release the word. Um, and sometimes it can have multiple parts, and sure. only some of it's given to you at a time. Sure. So I'm going to show you guys something. Um, and this is, I don't know if people are going to believe it. Um, I which, was there. Which I'm... Again, and just like she said, we don't care about people's opinions. We don't care what people think of us. When God gives people a word that is a true prophet, and I don't go by prophet. God gives me things, and he always has since it really started happening in, in 1995. Um, but it happened earlier, like in my youth. About six or seven years old, I started seeing things. I, I didn't know what they were. I, my family never went to church. And if they did, my, my parent, well, my mom went to church just to be seen because she thought she was, she had to be seen. And But anyway, that's another, that's a whole nother episode. So she and I and our son was married seven months and we went to Arkansas in 2017. Too long down the road on 412. I used to live out there. This yeah. preface that, so yeah. I knew where all this stuff was. Yeah. Um, Solemn Springs, to be exact. Yep. Um, so. Highway 412. Let me switch my display capture here. Get rid of that. And there we go. How do you blow this up? I drove this road many times. Excuse me. Okay, now we got a better. Okay, so up here it says 1995 State Road Highway 59 or 412, uh, Salem Springs, Arkansas. Okay, so we're coming from Oklahoma and going east, coming this way. So we get about right, right here where this red car is, and I stop. <laughs> right in the middle of the road and I looked over at this building and it's, well you can see it on the screen 412 Vapes it's, it was a vapor shop and I looked at I looked at um, Joycey and said this building is going to be destroyed I just kept going it totally freaked me out Like <laughs> he just drops this out of nowhere and then just keeps driving like nothing happened and I'm like wait, 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 what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So slow down. Yeah, I just stopped in the middle of the road and just kind of, I just, just casually looked over. I was like, I pointed and I said that building's going to be destroyed. Turned back and just so nonchalantly, just kept like, driving. And she's like, I know, I'm just looking at him like, what just happened? And, well, and she's like, is there anything else? Like, yeah. Like, elaborate on that. Yeah. Yeah. She kept going on like, what, what the, what the <laughs> hell just happened? What, what are you talking about? And I was like, I don't know. So God gave me. I, I don't know. Well, I, I knew from the thing you're getting ready to show. Yeah, hold on a second. Yeah, go ahead. You can talk. Anytime that he's had visions or anything, whenever I've been present, I can always tell by the look on his face. That Something's something, about to happen. Something has happened. Yeah. He's seen something. What's going on? Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's just how it is. And so, this is one of those times. So we're going to scroll out, and right here is where that building is. It got taken out by a tornado and high, uh, high wind, high winds. Yep. Straight, straight line winds. Straight line winds. And two small tornadoes went through yep. that area in 2019. Yep. Yep. So, so we'll go back down the street view. And this is the same place, red top building, white building, East Gate. So. Blew the roof off and they had to permanently close it. Yeah, because as you see, it says permanently closed. Um, so let me switch here so we can talk. And um, you can obviously see from the aerial view that it's no longer there. Yeah, it's, it's no bueno. It's gone. Okay, so. This next one, uh, <laughs> I think, I don't think my mother-in-law really knew what the, 
heck I was talking about. I mean, she kind of knew, but she didn't know. She It didn't register, like, fully into comprehension mode. I want to say this was the first one that... This, this is where it really took off for her and her mom to realize, you know, who I was. Like, um, we're not just dealing with some regular person. <laughs> like, who are you? <laughs> okay. Like... So... Yeah. This here is six six point one miles from my house, um, from where I'm living in Hopstown, Indiana. And I was coming from the east, coming west, and I was on Marco Polo with my mother-in-law. And I told her this was a Thursday, I believe. Yeah, it was it was a Thursday. And I told her that this garage was going to be destroyed, and part of this barn was going to be messed up. That Saturday, yeah, and this is two days later. This is technically in um, Cynthia, Indiana. Um, so, which um, the garage was right here. Um, so, put this in a little bit of perspective. So I'm coming this way, and I'm poloing and talking to my mother-in-law, and I said, you know, this garage and barn is going to be destroyed and have damage, but the garage was my my main focus point. So Saturday come along, we had straight line winds, possibly tornadoes. We don't really know. Um, Monday morning, I'm headed to work. This garage is on the ground. Um, the top of this barn, um, the roof was was peeled back about three or four feet. Not not too bad. Not not real bad. Significant damage, but it was enough that you knew something had happened. Um, so that's when it really, really started taking off for them to, to fully understand that, you know, <laughs> I see things. Um, oops. So. Crazy. Yeah. But all my visions and stuff and prophetic words started happening in, in 1995. Um, when I really, and I tried to talk to a Baptist preacher about it, um, where I was going and he's like, ha, oh, don't worry about it. It's, it's nothing to talk about. It's this or that. And I'm like, okay, whatever. I, you know, I was young as 20 something years old. I didn't know any better, but I knew, I knew better, but I didn't know better. Um, and the whole part where she talked about um, we don't get along with <laughs> we don't get along with uh, pastors and organized religion. We just don't uh, because we see through the BS. Um, we had a Pentecostal jack wagon. Um, knock on our door when we lived in Cynthia five years ago, almost six. You were at work. Um, yeah, I was at work. See, they always, see, they always show up when I'm not around. Because I always challenge, I'll challenge their theology, and I did. Um, so he he showed up, and of course I, me being me, I got in touch with him. And I said, "What do you want?" Well, we want to invite you to, to, to our church. I was like, "Why?" Well, because, you know, well, we're having a revival and, and uh, uh, this and that. I was like, like y'all speak in garbage. I said, y'all speak in tongues. I said, that's no longer around. And, you know, I started giving him, you know, correct, the correct context of Scripture with the correct interpretation of Scripture. This dude lost his ever-loving <laughs> mind. Yeah, he did. Didn't he? Yeah. Oh, he if he would have, if, if he... If there was nobody around, he probably would have cussed me out. And you weren't even hateful to no, him. No, I was, I, I just tell it like it is. I mean, people don't like truth. And I told him, I said, I said, I already know who you are. He goes, you don't know nobody. I said, okay. I said, you used to have a church um, at uh, uh, East Mount Carmel. And um, my, uh, well, just outside of Owensville, I said, my uh, ex-wife's grandparents and her dad and uncle went there, uh, Joy and Dan Peach. 
I said, and April was my ex-wife. Oh, oh well, not now just because cause your family. I said, I'm not saying that. I just know who you are, and you, you sir, are a liar. Just that's just how it is. Oh, well, you're just being combative. You, you don't, you don't know what the Bible says. And I was like, okay. I was like, whatever. So yeah, me and me and these people that that are Pentecostals and you know running around like a bunch of idiots. That's not the Holy Spirit, y'all. And you know, I'm sorry to say, but revival has already happened, and it happened in Acts chapter two. Revival is going to happen when the second coming happens. And you got that's blocked. that's our revival, huh? And you got blocked really quickly. Oh yeah, I got blocked, and some of his church congregation uh, started running their mouth, and I just laughed at him. I was like, whatever. Um, so it's not easy having this burden. Because I, I really didn't want the gift of prophecy or the gift of seer, um, but I've had it my, my whole life. Um, and that's why I I don't hang out with people. I'm a recluse, and I like it that way. I, I'm very private. Um, I don't like people to, you know, question every move, and that's why... We had we were supposed to move out closer to my work, and I was like, no, not gonna happen because I don't want to be underneath anybody's thumb or question me where I'm going, when am I, you know, can you come in today or will it? No, because when it's my time, I, I, it's my time, you know. Um, and that's one, and that's another thing. I don't watch TV. I'll watch um, uh, Orthodox videos. I'll watch a lot of Jay Dyer when I have time. Or I'll read a prophetic book, uh, not a prophetic book, but a, whatever them books are back there. The yeah, yeah, the the <laughs> the life of the apostles, which yeah, is a really good book. Um, Something then, that feeds our minds yeah. and our souls. And the other book is the homilies on the Book of Revelation, which Protestants can't interpret the Book of Revelation, so uh, they c- they can barely interpret um, scripture. But that's another that's another uh, issue, uh, and I, I love these people. They're just walking in error, and they they're just they just don't know it. Um. So anyway, back to our little show back here. Back to the groovy movie. Back to the groovy Remember movie. That? I hope you all got <laughs> I hope you all got some popcorn. Okay, so in one of my one of my visions, um, this is uh, Oak Grove Road and. I-69 going south towards Evansville, Indiana. And one of my dreams or visions, if you will, excuse me, um, I was parked along, along this road and standing on this overpass looking south to Evansville. This is Evansville way back here. And all I seen was thousands and thousands of people walking north up I-69. Were they on the road or in the grass? They were everywhere. They were they were all over. Oh I mean, they goodness. were they were over, you know, on the side of the road over here, but they they covered I-69, the median. They were just walking this way. Now, I can give you a, my speculation and and my thoughts on this, on what it was, um, but I can't release that right now because with all the censorship going on and all of the, all of the, um, yeah, I can't even say that, so. Gotta speak in code. Yeah, gotta speak in code. So I can't, I can't say what I'd like to say. That's why I'm trying to get my Patreon page going because I have a lot more freedom of speech instead of on a um, platform such as this who limited where you're limited to you don't have freedom of speech anymore on these types of platforms so once i get a couple of um loyal subscribers it's going to be like a dollar a month um and that's the minimum um and i'm going to put out more content Uh, i'm eventually going to just do away with YouTube and Facebook and I already got rid of my Twitter because Jack Dorsey, well, I'll just, 
Can't leave say that, that either. I just leave that alone too. <laughs> um, so there's things that are coming, uh, which I can't discuss because I haven't, I haven't been um, moved to by the spirit, if you will. Um, and I don't, I don't get on here to pat myself on the back because I could care less if I'm on YouTube, Facebook, or whatever. I'll be glad when they throw the switch to internet and it all goes down permanently, just to be quite honest. Um, because there's, there's too much distractions with social media. There's too much distractions with televisions. Uh, I mean, yeah, I have a laptop and I, I have two big monitors. Um, only for reading purposes and broadcasting so I can pull things up. But if people would just, you know, quiet themselves inside and in their minds and focus on more alone time, reading scripture, reading a good, you know, a good book from the church fathers, having that relationship with God and his son and the Holy Spirit, and you become quiet inside, you start to know how church fathers and monks and priests live because they are very quiet people, reserved people. And that's the power of the Holy Spirit. We don't have to go out here and dance around and flop on the floor and cut a rug in a, in a Pentecostal Holy Ghost dance, like they say, which is unbiblical, by the way. Um, we have to learn to quiet in ourselves, get rid of all the distractions, the white noise, if you will. Um, that's why I don't go anywhere. I hate, I hate going in public. I definitely hate driving to Evansville. <laughs> I, I can't stand it. It makes me ill. I want to go to the river. I'm on my own. Yeah, <laughs> if she, I mean, I'll go to Evansville every once in a while, but that's, that's where our church is. Yeah. Um, but if, like, Walmart, I don't even like going to Walmart no more because they're... I don't like Walmart either. They're affiliated with, um, what's his name, over in the CCP land. Mm. Um, so, which, whatever. I just don't like getting out in public. I don't, I don't like to, I don't, I don't socialize. I'm, I'm an introvert and I always have been. Um, but me too. If people, you know, talk about things that, you know, piques my curiosity, like cars, trucks, patina, mechanics, church fathers, orthodoxy, theology, philosophy, which I'm not real good with philosophy, but I'm getting better. Um, I'll talk your ear off, but anything aside from that, or, you know, the, the current state of our, our, uh, uh, commodities, which our country's lacking, um, that's one thing, but just, just to sit down and jibby jab and gab, I have no desire to do that, do I? Mm -hmm. I mean, she, she'll tell you. When I don't want to talk, I'm not going to talk. I just want to, you know, and she'll be like, what's wrong with you? Ain't nothing wrong with me. Mm -hmm. I'm not in the mood to talk. Most time I know. I mean, she, I, she knows pretty quick because I I've told her. don't have to ask. Yeah. I mean, she, when we first got together, I was just a quiet person. She's like, what's wrong? Nothing. <laughs> You're not saying it. I don't yeah, have right? to say. I used to be like that. I'd be like, yeah. if someone's not saying something, that means there's something wrong. Yeah, and like, when I'm quiet, that doesn't mean nothing. that something's wrong. It means I'm good. I'm the same way. Yeah, I want to, you know, I'm good. I, there, I, you know, and here's the thing. I have never been happier in my life than these last six years, going on seven years. I have a lot to talk about, but I don't want to. <laughs> I want to... I just want to stay to myself and, and live my life and, you know, have, make fun of stupid truck drivers like my brother. Shut up, stupid. And make fun of me. And make fun of her because she's, you know, got a four-year-old voice. And I'm an easy target. And six-year-old hands. I mean, <laughs> you know. I graduated. <laughs> it was four-year-old hands. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So, um, I encourage you guys. I mean, I probably won't, but she, my wife will. Go check out um, uh, Betty's YouTube channel. It's it's uh, a servant's heart. Um, you know, which I'm I'm blown away by that video. I've watched a couple of her videos, and you know, I just I can just tell certain things about videos. Uh, not to take any way anything away from this lady, because she comes from a, a very sincere heart. Um, but there's just some things that I don't agree with. Um, and I'm not even going to get into that because it's not even worth it. Um, but that video, was, it, it hit me in the heart. And uh, I just wanted to, I wanted to share that. Uh, because everything she, everything she said in that video, I agree with her 100%. Because she was on point on every step. Um, especially how, how we're we're outspoken about truth and we'll, we'll, you know, basically stop at nothing to achieve truth, whether it hurts people's feelings or not. We're, we're not, we're not in the business to, um, hurt people's feelings, but if people's feelings get hurt, then that means you've been convicted. And that's, that's just, that's just the way things are. Uh, it's not that I'm being mean or, or hateful or spiteful that's that's just how it is i mean i get my feelings hurt all the time when i do something wrong and i upset my wife and she breaks out the skillet which she hasn't done in a while but you know it's it's called conviction it's called accountability and you're not going to find that i better stop <laughs> i better stop so anyway uh i guess we're gonna end this we'll go to bed I'm tired Six days a week work is getting old, yeah. but it is what it is. So, you guys uh, have a good night and a good good rest of your weekend. And oops, wrong one. Oops. Oh, break bread, fam. <laughs> Where's the thing at? There it is. Okay. So, anyway, God bless you guys. God bless you. Feel free to share, like, subscribe, comment, whatever. Hit the bell so you're notified when we go live next because you never know what we're going to talk about on here. It's true. It's true. I could start re uh, critiquing some some uh, videos like I used to three years ago before I even become Orthodox. <laughs> like Paul Washer, Mike Winger, um, Rodney Howard Brown, which... <laughs> Joshua Holmes. That was a fun one. That was fun. Joshua <laughs> Holmes, yeah. <laughs> called it I told I told them six years ago he's fake he's a joke yeah but anyway um start start critiquing these these mm. these false people as Paul puts it false teachers and false prophets which in a way is warning it is a warning to keep people away from being deceived well, that's the whole thing, uh, being deceived. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, and my mother will tell you, I can't stand when people twist scripture to please man's flesh. That'll make you rage real Oh, I will, I will flip out. Oh, I will Jesus. flip biscuits. I will be like Jesus in the temple, flipping tables and breaking out my whip and start whipping people. And that's, that's one, that's just, that's part of the serious side. Of prophets, we take things very serious, and we take th take things to heart when it comes to God and His Word, not my Word, not her Word, but God's Word. It's just that's just how it is. It's like you're physically being hurt mm -hmm. by other people's actions and words whenever they do a disservice to God or speak lies. Yeah, and see, here's the thing that a lot of people don't really truly comprehend. Well, I was hoping I could get through that without anything happening. But anyway, um, that was a good video. That was a fantastic video. So, um, yes, Betty and her husband. 
Betty and John, and uh, the channel is uh, A Servant's Heart, A Servant's Heart, and uh, I wanted to thank, to thank my son-in-law again for doing that video, sharing that, sharing that video, you know, and I wanted to tell Michael that I love you very much and Joycey, very, very much. So anyway, this is Valentine's Day, and uh, I'm going to ask you all to read Hosea chapter 4, God's love, Hosea, Hosea chapter 4. And happy Valentine's Day to all of you Valentines out there. Happy Valentine's Day. Uh, this is the 14th of February, 20, 2020, 2022. Have a blessed day. And uh, I love you all. I'm going to do the Our Father and then I'm going to go ahead and sign it off. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen and amen in the name of the father Son and the Holy Spirit in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, forever and ever to all ages. Amen and amen. Have a blessed day, you guys. Bye bye for now. Bye bye.